Hey guys, what's going on? It's Target here. Welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Sabres BGM. I left off asking you guys what we should do about our goal scoring situation because we are, you know, near the bottom of the league in terms of our goals for, and that's not what we need. We need to be up near the top because I think, I can, hold on, I just can't remember, hold on. We need. I said we needed to add a scorer because goals for, we're at 156, we're 26th in the league. Like, that's the reason why we're losing so many games. I mean, our goals for per game number is 2.64, and our goals against per game, that's the only thing that's really keeping us in there, is that we're having solid defense. So one thing that I wanted to do was make a trade, and I asked you guys, what's the best option for us? I, and I think the unanimous decision, and really the only one that really makes sense, is for Jordan Aberle of the Edmonton Oilers. And it makes sense both sides, all right? That's why I'm going after this. The Oilers are still a competitive team, and I don't want to take away all their players just because of that. Jordan Eberle for Ryan Kessler, who's really not having the best year. He never really does have a great year. He's at a plus 9, 35 points. I think that we could do much. We could have much better lineup than that. Uh, so let's throw Kessler on, and we were going to throw on... Uh, let's go to skaters matching. It's Dimitru. There we go. Dimitru, whatever. Dimitri. So it was Kessler and Dimitri for Eberle. Now, the reason why I think this will go through and why this is a good trade, I'm just going to show you guys. Kessler is a good center, all right? If you look at the Edmonton Oilers and what they have in terms of centers, this is their depth. It goes Nugent Hopkins and then an 83 over Dreisaitl and then a Magali and a, a Gordon. By adding Kessler, they will add a second line center that can back up Nugent Hopkins and they won't have to rely so heavily on Leon Dreisaitl. All right. Now, in terms of why I'd take a winger like Jordan Eberle, look at all their wingers. Look at their depth. They've got Taylor Hall, obviously a top-line winger, and then they've got two second-line wingers in Palat and Perron. They've got Pouliot on the third line and Cramarosa on the fourth line, all right? So, like, lots of options there on the left wing. And on the right wing, you've even got some options, too. you got Jordan Eberle, who we're going to take. They've got Yakupov and Purcell. I mean, even if you look at it like that, if you take a look and say, let's add, uh, you know, Yakupov to the top line with Taylor Hall and Nugent Hopkins, is it really that bad? And then the second line, you know, you would have... Um, Kessler, Palat, and Perron, and then the third line would be Pouliot, um, Dreisaitl, and, uh, Purcell, like, that's a solid lineup, that's a solid lineup, and they still have all the depth, so that's why I think this trade is a good trade for both sides, and they also get Dimitru, who will be a, you know, a right-wing sniper that could possibly jump up and take over Jordan Eberle, probably not, <laughs> but you know what, he's a depth sniper that we're adding back to them, giving him a little bit more, all right, will it go? And it will. There you go. I'm happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Edmonton Oilers. I consider it a done deal. So there you go, guys. I like that trade. I'm going to go to my coaching options right now. Edit lines. We're going to do best lines. All right. So now they've got it set as Gaudreau, Reinhardt, Eberle, Zuccarello, Stahl, Nash. That's fine. DeLuca, Gergensons, and Felino, And then a third line of Baptiste, Carrier, and Devontae Smith, Pelly. I like that. And then we got Demers and Shattenkirk, CC and Ristolainen, Zadorov and Bowie. Nice. I like all that line up there. Uh, Jordan Eberle, Johnny Goudreau. Is Goudreau a left-handed shooter? I believe he is. Yeah, so let's switch him and Eberle. So they're on their shooting wings. Uh, Zuccarello and Nash. You know what? Let's switch Zuccarello and Nash. Oh, no, Nash there because he's a, he's a left-handed shooter. Reinhardt and Goudreau. Let's switch it around. Uh, let's go penalty kill. Eric Stahl and Gergensons. Reinhardt and Eberle. Fine, whatever they say there. And then Stahl and Gergensons. That's fine. Reinhardt, Goudreau. I'm going to switch it around. Uh, Gergensons and Zuccarello. You know what? Instead of, yeah, Zuccarello, fine. That's fine with me. Uh, extra attacker, we got Reinhardt and Eberle. That's good. Goalies, Nichols, and Sen. And uh, there you go. So, I like that. I think that's a good addition to our team adding Jordan Eberle. Now, Reinhardt's got an actual first-line right-wing sniper to start scoring. You know, that, that's that's what I think. Anyway, all right, anyway. Let's, um, let's see. Do we need to make any other adjustments before we go? Um, cause right now, let's just see what we got. I mean, I don't think that we could pick up a, I don't think we have the, the players available. You know, that's, that's one of the things. Um, okay, hold on. Let me take, let me take a look here before we get going. Let me go to coaching options. We'll go to edit lines. Uh, see where we can make some adjustments where we're playing guys above their, below their, so we could trade like a guy like DeLuca or Zuccarello and a prospect for a better defenseman. Maybe even trade Jason Demers, who we just picked up, we just signed, for a better uh, two-way defenseman. But, I mean, we could take a look at that. We could take a look at that. And it's got to make sense for both parties. Uh, let's see. Especially if we're going to be trading whites for whites. So let's see 
Who has too many defenders? I mean, we always look at this, but there's probably going to be nobody else. Uh, Arizona, they've got Ekman, Larson, and Leandl. No, they're not going to want to deal. Boston's got Hamilton and Giordano. We already looked at this, didn't we? Yeah, no one's going to have any extra defensemen, really. Falk, Murphy, no. I don't know why Justin Falk's 90 overall. That's crazy. Uh, just do a quick look through, just to make sure we're not missing anybody. If we can't find anything, we can't find anything. But it's it's worth the peak. Edmonton had Schultz. Justin Schultz would be okay, but they don't have anybody to take over. Uh, Florida has Petrovic. He's a defensive defenseman. Three and a half green stars. No, thank you. That's okay. I mean, Petrovic would be a good option, but... I mean, Dolly Wall would be better. But anyway, uh, Los Angeles. Nope. Minnesota. They've got those. They got Brodine and Suter. Uh, they don't have a top. Too many tops. There's not going to be many that have three top pairing defensemen. You know, but there might be one that's got a young defenseman that's ready to step up. Uh, and what, you know, a veteran ready to jump out. Wow, New York has no defense. If we were to pick up a forward, that would be the one. Um, Cohen and Carlson. No, we already talked about those guys. Philadelphia. It's probably going to be nothing, guys. Oh, here we go. Oh, let's, this is uh, Pittsburgh. They got Bomeister and Mata and Chris Letang. They wouldn't get rid of Mata. They would probably want to deal Bomeister, but it looks like they just added all these guys. Yeah, I'm not going to say. Let's make that trade. Velasic, St. Louis. Actually, what did St. Louis have now? Yeah, so they've got Petrangelo and Myers. They made another deal. I don't know why. Um, Hedman. They're not going to want to trade Hedman. Here, there's not much depth. Vancouver, they've got nothing. Washington, nope. And Winnipeg, no. Where's Buff? We didn't even see Bufflin. So I don't think we can make a trade for a defense, but I think we're going to have to go with what we got here. Um, so actually, I'm going to go to my trading block. Trading block. I'm going to just update it with what we want. Uh, let's see here. So trading block, this is what we want. I'd like to add a top pairing defenseman. I'd like to add a top pairing defenseman. There you go. Um, I'd like to add a, I don't need to add a second line forward. I don't think that's what we need. I think that's all we need as a top pairing defenseman. That's, uh, you know what, and a backup goalie. Okay. Um, we would also take, what do we have in terms of picks? Hold on. We got the 2019 first. Let's see here. We got the 2019 first, 2021. So we got. I would like. I want seconds and thirds. Um, I want seconds, thirds, and I want future seconds and thirds. There you go. Okay, that's good. Our surplus. Um, we have a surplus of. If I'm looking for a top pairing defenseman, I'm gonna be looking. I've got a surplus of forwards. Of second line forwards, up to age 26. Actually, no, I'm gonna clear it. I'm gonna clear these all off. Just like so forwards, second line forwards, uh, up to 26. I've got a sur. Uh, you know what? 30, 35. We'll do that. We got a surplus of them. Defense. I've got a surplus of young defense. 17 to 24. Uh, and they're gonna be. Let's say any defense with three and a half star potential. To four star potential, medium to medium. That's what we've got available. And then we've also got a number of forwards. Any forward, we'll say up to 26. We'll do the exact same parameters 26 or 24. Again, three and a half yellow stars, medium to medium. There you go. So that gives us a better thing of our surplus. Uh, we've also got current. No, we don't have that. There we go. And players on the block, the firsts, and no, not Marshall Smith. I would say Zuccarello. I mean, Zuccarello's been a good player. You know what? I'll put, you know what? I'm going to put Zuccarello on. We'll see what we can get for him. Hold tight. Zuccarello. And I'm going to throw on our boy here. Big boy. Oh, wait, there he is, Rick Nash, 34 years old. So those are the two guys I'm going to throw on there, and this year's first. So we'll see what comes up. Uh, hold on. Nash is how old? 34. Yeah, okay, so I put up to 35. So there you go. So we've got a surplus of those guys. I think that we'll be able to get a trade. I think we'll see what, what comes up here. So let's sim up to the deadline. We'll do this up, do it upright. 
That's what I'm looking forward to. All right, let's see if Jordan Eberle can help us score. I mean, we've taken some good scorers from some good teams. You know, from Calgary, we took uh, 3-2 loss. Calgary, we took um, Johnny Goudreau. And then Edmonton, we took Jordan Eberle. We've got good snipers. All right, uh, we're good. We've set our trading block. Let's get into the trade deadline. Let's see if anybody offers us anything for these guys. I don't think that we're going to get anything. We'll see. Buffalo acquired at Jordan Eberle. Nope. Still no trades from anybody. I think our parameters are probably too strict, but uh, that's okay. Nobody's trading anyone, to be honest. Oh, there's one call from Dallas. What do they want? They want DeLuca and Lonvig for seconds. No, I don't want to replace them with seconds. I want current roster players more than I want seconds. Nope. That literally may be the only deal that gets gets done. There you go. That's the only... I bet you there's no deals this, this deadline. Nothing at all. The only deal was Ryan Kessler and Dimitri from Buffalo, from us, obviously, to Edmonton for Jordan Eberle. That's the only deal that happened. And that worked well for both teams. So let's see if we can win. Let's see if we can win some games here going into the stretch. We need to win in order to get into the playoffs. That's not how you do it. I don't know what's going on with this team. Some people believe, oh, Jesus, some people believe that there is there are teams in this game that just cannot succeed no matter what. And I feel like no matter who, what team I control, there you go. No matter what team I control, it's me that's going to end up with that kind of team. So maybe it just took a little bit of time getting used to the, the players, like getting, you know, them working some things out behind the scenes. I don't know, some hazing. There you go. Um, but we need to go on a big winning streak to finish the season if we want to make the playoffs. Not like that. That's not, we can't be shut out for nothing. Like Nichols has played not very well in his, you know, major season as a starting goalie, as an elite goalie. He's not been that great. I'm not a fan of him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And these are all regulation losses. So we're losing out on points. We lose out on six points there. These are playoff points. We're not making the playoffs this year. We're only five above 500. We're losing every game. Like, what more do I need to do for this team? Like, the defense is pretty good. The goaltending is really good. Our offense is stacked. Like, not stacked, but it's not bad at all. You know, you got Sam Reinhardt, who's 90 overall. Addition to Jordan Eberle, who's 88 overall sniper. And he's got Johnny Goudreau, who's an unbelievable sniper. Like, what's the secret combination for this team? What are we lacking? Like, loss after loss, they are mounting. I We're not making the playoffs. We're not making the playoffs. Good thing we held on to that pick. Top 10 pick in WHL. Uh, hold on. Top 5 there. We're not, we're going to have, what, who's got a lot of first round? You know what? We could finish with a top 10 pick. So I'm going to take a look here. Uh, hold on. Let's scout here for three weeks. Get some information on these guys. Cause we're going to probably have another top first round, like top 10 pick. Judging by the way this year is going. Like, look at this shit, man. Look at this. This is awful. The only line that's producing is Eric Stahls. Like Sam Reiner has got 50 assists. Like good on him. He's doing well there. But, wow, yeah, this, this, this year's a write-off again. Like, how many years have we played? And I'm giving our team the keys to success at this point. If I were the, the GM of the Buffalo, or the owner of the Buffalo Sabres, I'd fire me. Like, there you go, we win. We look at the standings, I'm really scared. We're at 82 points. We're actually in a playoff position. We are close, well, we're four points off of a playoff position. We've got a bunch of games left here. We can do the playoffs. <clears throat> like, we win the next couple games here. We're in a better spot. We could do this. We just have to get ahead of Ottawa, and we're in the playoffs. All right. Let's see what we can do. We're going to finish off the year. We're going to go game by game. We're going to sim. You know what? I'm gonna, for the first portion here, I'm just going to simulate past the game. And then when we get down to the nitty-gritty, I'm going to actually get in there and sim the game from the view. There's a win. All right, that's huge. That's huge right there. That's a huge win. Where does that put us in terms of team standings? Uh, Buff Florida's in on the mix now, but look at Ottawa. They're at 86 points too. All right, here we go. Come on. These games are crucial. Got to beat them. Come on. Got to beat Detroit. Come on, boys. Come on. Yes, there you go. Another 3-1 win. I love it. Oh, man. If we get into the playoffs, it's going to be an absolute squeaker. Um, standings. We're at 86 points. Ottawa's at 88. All right, so we're still in this. Uh, Pittsburgh's at 85 points. So it's it's going to come down to our division. 
All right. And Ford is now up next, too. And they're only one point behind us. Come on. We got to beat the Islanders. Come on, guys. Keep the streak alive. We need these wins if we want to get into the playoffs. Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, damn it. And does that come in OT? It did. It came in OT. So we get a point. Oh, no, it didn't. It wasn't a point. All right, here's Florida. This is a huge game for us against the Florida Panthers. Absolutely massive game. We win this game. We're in a great spot. Florida's going to get bumped back even further. God damn it. That one came in OT. So we're actually tied with Florida now at 87 points. Um, Ottawa's at 90. So there's a three-point gap now. We've got three games left. We pretty much need to win all three if we have any hope of getting into the playoffs. Here we go. I'm going to sim in here. If we don't win this game, we win the last two. We got to rely on luck. First period? Yes, 1 0. Second? 2 to 1. Third? Oh, OT? Yes, we get the win in overtime. Nicely done. Power play goal by Eric Stahl. Beauty. All right. We're in this still, guys. We're still in this. We're going to go to the standings after this. Take a look. Oh, man. 40 wins on the year. We'll get our career, or uh, what the coach or the GM wanted from us. Uh, team standings. We're at 89 points. Okay, we're at 89 points. We currently sit one point out of a playoff spot. Looks like Ottawa lost. Here we go. So this is an important game against Carolina. First period, 0-0. Second, 2-0. Third, 3-1. Yes! Eric Stahl gets the, the, the third goal of the game. There are two goals for him in that one. I'm loving it. All right. So that puts us... We're going to go to the last game here against Columbus. We are now at 91 points. Uh, if Ottawa loses here, we're going to be a point ahead of them. But we still need to win this game if we want to get into the in, into the playoffs. And it's going to come down to a little bit of luck. All right, so we're three of us are at 91 points, all right? Columbus is even in on the mix. If Columbus beats us in this one, they'll make the playoffs. If we win this one, we could potentially make the playoffs, all right? Otherwise, we could, well, we could slip in here too. Uh, Buffalo is four. We could actually get in on a couple spots here. This is a huge game, absolutely huge. We have to win this game. If we win this game, I think we're going to be in the playoffs, depending on what the other happens with the other games. First period, oh, down 2-1. Second, 2-2. Two, two. All right, we're going to go times four, really slow. We're out shooting them big time here. Come on, guys. This is your time. Get into the playoffs, and then we'll focus on one game at a time. Power play, Columbus. Oh, I can't do it. All right, 10 and a half minutes left. All tied at two. Out shooting them nearly double at this point. Unbelievable. Come on, guys. Five minutes left. Three, two, one. Damn it, this is a huge game. This overtime is absolutely crucial for us. This one point. God damn it! No, no, no! No! Columbus will take the spot in the east, or in the west part, or east. East? West. East. Yeah, that, that spot in the east on their side. And we're at 92 points. Columbus is at 92 points. We could make the playoffs still. But we need Buffalo and Ottawa to lose. Or, sorry, we need Boston and Ottawa to lose. Th like, this is what it's coming down to. This is how close this is. Oh, my word. Standings. And we're out. God damn it! We just had to win that game and we would have been in. And we're out. God damn it! Fucking stupid game! Ah! <laughs>